This week, Siskel and Ebert review Dan Aykroyd, convinced that neighbor Jack Lemmon is a war criminal who's getting away with murder. William Hurt plays the sinister lord of a mysterious mansion in Jane Eyre. And a little boy takes an incredible journey in James and the Giant Peach. like having sex. Dan Aykroyd and Lily Tomlin co-star with Jack Lemmon and Bonnie Anyone? Hunt in the dark comedy Getting Away with Murder, one of five new movies we'll be reviewing this week on Siskel and Ebert, along with a children's film that may hold some of the same appeal as Babe, and also a new version of Jane Eyre and a raucous satire of Prozac by the comedy troupe Kids in the Hall. I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. Our first movie is Getting Away with Murder, and it's a very curious film indeed, a sort of black comedy that needlessly involves the Holocaust in its plot and therefore sets up all sorts of unnecessary questions of relevance and taste. As the movie opens, Dan Aykroyd plays a decent chap who discovers that he lives next door to an accused Nazi war criminal played by Jack Lemmon. It's charged that the Lemmon character was the Beast of Birkow, a sadistic concentration camp commandant responsible for taking thousands of lives. Aykroyd is horrified. That's the Mulberry Man. Yeah. Oh, well, isn't it nice? Oh, 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 shuts in. No, he when it appears that the old man might not have to pay for his crimes, Aykroyd feels he has to take matters into his own hands. Then he finds out that the old man was not guilty after all. I'm not going to go to jail for killing the wrong man. I'd go down as one of the biggest idiots in history. My name would be a punchline. Besides, what good can I do in jail? Well, no, that's not the answer. I'm sorry. To punish himself, Aykroyd decides to break up with the woman he loves, played by Bonnie Hunt. To further make amends, he marries the old man's daughter, played by Lily Tomlin. I like the way you phrase things, Jack. I think you are hilarious. Really, I don't ever remember you laughing at any of my remarks. Oh, often later, when I'm alone, I will chuckle out loud over something you have said. Why not just chuckle when I say it? I am guarded with people, Jack. But when I'm by myself, I am very outgoing. Now, what bothered me all through this movie and distracted me even during the good scenes, and there are some, was the thought that this whole comedy is based on a character who may or may not be a mass murderer. The way it is, the good things in the film, including some of the dark humor and also the charm of the relationship between Aykroyd and Bonnie Hunt, is lost because of the great weight of the Holocaust bearing down on what is essentially intended as a harmless little comedy. Nazis can be funny in the movies, but genocide, I don't think so. Thumbs down from me on Getting Away with Murder. Yeah, my heart sank as this film opened up with this premise. I, I sat there and I thought, are they really going to try and pull this off? Mm -hmm. I then thought of uh, uh, people who would have a vested interest in, in this saying this is being made as a, a subject of, of laughter, even a brittle laughter, and even with an attempt to deal with some of the issues, that uh, the way the screenplay does by saying, you know, uh, the, the how can you apply? The screenplay is aware of the issues it raises, but it's not aware that it didn't need to raise those issues. You could have made this guy... Anything. Or take uh, it into another world. A mad poisoner from yeah. Italy, or... Yeah. or any, he can, all he has to be is a real bad guy. Yeah. And the, then, the, no. then the comedy would maybe be liberated to work yeah, a little I, more freely. And, and I think that by, by putting this idea out in, in a quasi-humorous fashion, mm -hmm. it, it is tasteless. It doesn't work. Next movie, and our next film is a terrific children's film, The Best Since Babe, a stop-motion animated tale called James and the Giant Peach about a little boy who goes to America from England flying on an airborne giant peach and making friends with the creatures that live inside. Marvelous things will happen. Poor Glowworm. She's a little deaf. I, however, have exquisite hearing. Yeah? Well, listen to this. <laughs> Let's get out of here! 
Everything about this fantasy by Roald Dahl is fantastic, and the writing is smart enough to appeal to adults. You better not be near our Pete! Oh, please, don't let them spray us! Spray us? They'll see the yank up there and come after us with a shovel. It happened to my brother. Awful! Split him right down the middle. Now I have two half-brothers. The intricate work in creating James and the Giant Peach has to be seen to be appreciated. Just look at the wealth of detail in this scene. What if we don't make it to New York? I'll die if I have to go back to the way I was. They can't make me. Nobody can make you do anything, James. If you do not let them, you are a brave boy. James and the Giant Peach is so good that I hope it's a hit so that its filmmakers, producer Tim Burton and director Henry Selleck, who made the wonderful The Nightmare Before Christmas in 1993, will continue to make more animated films. I also hope that parents who complain about the lack of good movies for children don't let James and the Giant Peach get away. It's great. It is great. And you know what's interesting is that Disney, which is uh, the pioneer of kind of standard animation, right. is trying two other kinds of animation. Toy right. Story was all done in computers. Yep. This is stop action, which was right. pioneered by Ray, Ray Harryhausen. Right. And each kind of animation opens up another realm of possibilities yeah. for what can be done with magic on the screen. Well, as didn't you just sit there sort of with your mouth agape yeah. as you were... I mean, they keep topping themselves. It would have been so easier if they were money-minded. You pull a couple of characters out. It's fantastic enough as it is. This it's is one just great a, shot after it another. Is. And, you know, I had to kind of make a little ironic smile at the beginning because it starts out with live characters in beautiful soft focus right. pastels james and his perfect childhood with his wonderful right. parents and then bam the parents are dead i mean in all of these movies the parents are always dead you know something terrible happens so that the little kid can go on some kind of an adventure and it's right. the premise but here they didn't even bother to explain it it was just like a fly swatter okay when we come <laughs> back william hurt and charlotte gainsburg star in the gothic romance jane eyre Many credit card rebates hold you down with restrictions and yearly limits, but not the Discover card. The more you use it, the higher your cashback bonus award. So when it comes to our rebates, the sky is the limit. It pays to Discover. Before we do anything else, we gotta meet Mickey. He invented Disney World. Sure, I want to do Thunder Mountain. I'm definitely riding Dumbo. But first, I gotta talk to Mickey. I gotta meet the mouse. And after that, but not until I meet. <gasps> Call 1407W-Disney and make the dream come true. He says hi. That Mickey, I could talk to him all day. Do you know which grass and weed killer works faster? The weeds do. <laughs> weeds can't hide from spectricide. I'm not deceitful, and I'm not a liar. For if I were, I should say that I loved you. I do not love you. Young Anna Paquin, who won an Oscar for her supporting role in the piano, was featured there as young Jane Eyre, the heroine of Charlotte Bronte's 1847 gothic romance, which more or less single-handedly inspired the entire romance novel genre and has been filmed three times previously. In the story, Jane Eyre is an orphan raised by an aunt who hates her and then farmed out to a cruel boarding school. Eventually, however, she grows up and gets a job as a governess in the darkly mysterious country house of the enigmatic Mr. Rochester. Here, Charlotte Gainsbourg plays the adult Jane Eyre and William Hurt is Rochester. I once had a heart full of tender feelings. But fortune has knocked me about. I'm hard and tough as an India rubber ball. Does he hate Jane Eyre or choose to ignore her, or is he attracted to her? The whole appeal of the story is based on the fact that Jane never really knows. You examine me, Miss Eyre. Do you think me handsome? No, sir. <laughs> Joan Plowry plays the housekeeper who has some words of caution for lovelorn Jane. He is a proud man. All the Rochesters were proud. And gentlemen in his station are not accustomed to marrying their governesses. 
But there's mystery afoot. Desperate screams are sometimes heard from behind a locked door, and one night Mr. Rochester is almost burned alive before Jane saves him. Although they grow closer after his rescue, Jane has trouble believing that Rochester can ever return her love. Don't struggle so you're like a wild bird clawing at its cage. I'm no caged bird. I'm a free human being, independent, with a will of my own. Then stay. Stay and marry me. How dare you make fun of me? I mean what I say. Stay at Thornfield and be my wife. And what of Miss Ingram? Miss Ingram, I don't love Miss Ingram, nor does she love me. Jane, you strange, almost unearthly thing. I love you as my own flesh. If you make an inventory of Jane Eyre, you're going to find most of the furniture of countless other gothic romances. The isolated house, the family secret, the alternations between sunshine and shadow, the near tragedies, and the heroine's hopeless love for an unavailable man. All of this has been orchestrated in this version by the director Franco Zeffirelli, who is known for sunnier love stories in movies like Romeo and Juliet. All of course, that one has an unhappier ending than Jane Eyre. I like the atmosphere of this version. I thought William Hurt made an interesting Rochester whose threat was more psychological than physical. And I thought Charlotte Gainsbourg was a good choice for playing Jane Eyre, who thinks she doesn't have a chance with the man she loves. Oh, I want to focus on the choices of the two actors. Uh, Charlotte Gainsbourg has been interesting to me in almost every time I've seen her in The Little Thief, mm -hmm. in The Cement Garden. She's a terrific actress, uh, and she's playing it. She, she has that spunk, mm -hmm. that... Uh, core of steel that is also part of the formula of the gothic romance um, and then William Hurt you know it, it's this may sound so easy or so obvious but for an American actor to take on an English accent mm -hmm. is tough mm -hmm. Uh, and he does it extremely well. He, he could get tripped. the foreboding presence of Rochester, yeah. very convincingly. He, yeah. he has the weight of the character. It's a very good piece of work, and I'm glad to see William Hurt. Yeah. Okay, coming up next, the nation is tranquilized in brain candy as a financially troubled drug company feverishly puts out a new product. I think I just may have some. It's not that it isn't ready, sir. It's just that we have so much more testing to do. Dr. Cooper, is it ready or not? The boss of a powerful drug company has just issued orders for a new tranquilizer to be rushed into production with hilarious results in brain candy, an audacious, clever, very funny new satire from the comedy troupe known as Kids in the Hall. They play many of their parts in drag, and the joke doesn't stop there. What they have to say is as funny as how they look. Hi, welcome to the Nina Bedford Show. I'm Nina Bedford. Do you like my new outfit? Hmm. Happiness. Can it be bought in the form of a pill? The drug they've designed is a feel-good pill, and it's possible to view brain candy as an indictment of the happy as a clam and excited to be one drug called Prozac. How do you feel, patient 957? Oh, um, like a, uh, like a fresh towel drying on the line on a summer's day. Oh, I, I feel like a, like a, a little worm peeking its head out of the ground after a rainstorm and seeing no robin. The brain candy players are also funny just conversing as they put down the artifice of adult behavior in the corporate business world. I thought of the name for the drug. Gleeman X. Slogan? Gleeman X makes it feel like it's 72 degrees in your head. Oh. I think this is very funny stuff. Brain candy will appeal to young moviegoers who are fans of kids in the hall. I've seen them a couple of times on late night TV, and I often thought they seemed good only by comparison with the recent Saturday Night Live troops. But in brain candy, they're funnier than they've ever been on TV, and I recommend this picture as kind of a midnight show cult picture, which I suspect it's destined to become. Boy, are we apart on this one. Oh. I did not laugh once. I thought you this know, movie was 
awful, oh, no, Roger. dreadful, no. terrible, no. stupid, idiotic, no. unfunny, no. labored, forced, oh, Roger. painful, Roger, this, bad. What happened to your sense of humor? I Once got my sense of humor. That oh. was what the, my, oh. my sense of humor was starving for a laugh oh, as I looked no, at this Roger, movie. First of all, you didn't, the drag stuff was no, funny. So what? what we, so okay. what if it's They're funny? No, no, why no, is it no, funny? funny? Why is it funny that they're in drag? It's not funny that they're in drag. No, I've no, knocked not, pictures not, where people have no, been no, in drag no, when they're not no, funny. No, I'm no, saying, no, obviously, they're, they're, in they're, drag they're, and they're not funny. You didn't get the stuff about the, the drug and... Oh, I like caught it? on. I caught on. I, we're what just, happened, Roger? Just, we're different universes here. We can't talk oh, I, about it. Can't talk about it. It's not funny. I didn't laugh we once. We get paid to talk about it, Roger. Okay. Let's talk about it. Tell me one funny moment in the movie. There are dozens of funny moments. Every time I see... one. Every single time, I laughed throughout the picture. Okay. I laughed throughout the well, picture. Well, I'm happy for you. No, 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 no. But, well, that's a, at least that's a start. <laughs> it's a smile. Roger, will you look at this picture again? Maybe. I, sure I will. I'd be happy to. Sometime maybe in the 21st century. When we come back, a new Japanese animated film about cyborgs with minds of their own. Ghost in the Shell is next. After driving through Botswana's never-ending supply of mud, we came upon the largest animal of the land, the African elephant. These massive creatures can plow over trees with the butt of their heads, and spectators best stand clear, for they can pick up objects weighing nearly two tons. The preceding has been brought to you by the powerful all-new Nissan Pathfinder, now with 20% more cargo room to help you haul big things around. Just released on video, he's one of Disney's best-loved characters in the motion picture that's delighted families for generations, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. It's the original classic motion picture, a masterpiece of Disney imagination. And now, with this limited edition video, it's yours to own forever. This is a movie every family should have in their video collection. Walt Disney's masterpiece, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, on video for a limited time. Japanese animation, or anime, is the fastest growing underground cult in the movie world, even though these sleek and high-tech animated movies from Japan rarely surface in conventional theaters. Every year, a few of them break through, however, and the new anime feature making the rounds now is Ghost in the Shell. As the movie opens, the beautiful Major Makoko Kusanagi, who is part human, part computerized machine, breaks up an illegal meeting involving trade and internet violations. I don't believe it. Therm optic camouflage. Kusanagi and her sidekick, Bato, find themselves on the trail of the Puppet Master, a dreaded hacker whose intelligence exists only as a virus that seems to roam at will over the entire planetary network. Police! Everybody get down! Both sides in the struggle can become invisible, as in this fight scene between the Major and her quarry. Aw, out of ammo! Huh? And there are philosophical dialogue passages, in one of which we learn that the Puppet Master is, in fact, a computer program so advanced that it became aware of itself and now directs its own destiny. But it needs a body to occupy and wants to convince the beautiful Major to let it share her body. The ghost in the title refers to self-conscious intelligence, whether human or cybernetic, and Ghost in the Shell is unusually intelligent and challenging science fiction aimed at smart audiences. Well, there is certainly something to think about it, and that's a refreshing thing uh, from a lot of science fiction pictures, which are just purely doom and gloom. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a film dealing with artificial intelligence. Um, I like the look of the film. I like how simply moving the shadows, you know, just little movements on each character, they do it all the time, it always grabbed me. I was always staring at this film. A couple of other thoughts. One, um, it's, I think this is also, a, this whole genre is obviously a peek into the psyche of Japan mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. clearly there are people who are afraid of being robotized. Yes. And also, this business of using women. Uh, they have not gotten politically mm -hmm. correct because, because the woman is constantly shown nude and her body is dissected and it's a way of, of, of subverting and or of allowing and sexuality is, into and it. And yet she is the heroine. And I understand so, and the that. two key things in these movies, yeah. one, you put your finger on both of I them. Know. One, the robotized thing, and second, 
women are very frequently the protagonists, even though yeah. they are still seen as sex objects. No question. Yeah. Coming up next, our video pick of the week, a film that nobody nice. saw in theaters and I thought was really one of the fine sleepers of 1994. Honey, look, it's her. That lady from the Sprint commercial is about 10 cents a minute. Uh, hi, how are you? I just love your dime a minute rate. Oh, isn't that nice? Me too. It's good anywhere in the country. And now I hear you can call all the way to Canada for a dime. Canada? Really? Oh, look at that. Special on paper towels. Dime to Canada? That's bigger news than anything you'll find in there. This? Oh, this isn't mine. Blech. Call now to get 10 cents a minute across the U.S. and now even to Canada. Siskel and Ebert's Video Pick of the Week, brought to you by Orville Redenbacher's Gourmet Popping Corn, the best part of the movies. And now it's time for our Video Pick of the Week, and my choice is a film that really appealed to me in its simplicity. It's all set in one apartment, it seemingly takes place in real time, and all that it's about is a first date. The picture is called What Happened Was, and it's a superb debut feature from writer-director Tom Noonan about a dinner date between two smart and lonely New Yorkers. First, the woman, beautifully played by Karen Sillis, frantically tries to get her apartment ready. You're early. A real tension develops between the two as the evening progresses. They drink and talk and dine and drink and talk and flirt with a relationship. I mean, I can't believe the kind of relationships that people have. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's amazing the things that people settle for. You know, sometimes, like, if you're walking along the street, and, like, you see a couple, and, and it's, like, hard to imagine them sleeping together. Right, like your parents. My parents. And the compelling guy who plays the man there is Tom Noonan, the writer-director, starring in this picture as well. I think what happened was would be a perfect film to rent on a date. <laughs> It could trigger a long night of conversation, honest conversation. Tom Noonan's What Happened Was, newly out on home video, my video pick of the week. Now let's take another look at the movies we reviewed on this show. Two thumbs down for Getting Away With Murder, a film that is a disaster right from its premise, trying to make comedy out of a mass murderer. Two thumbs up, way up, for James and the Giant Peach, a fabulous film for children and the adults who will accompany them. Two more thumbs up, for a new treatment of Jane Eyre, with wonderful performances by Charlotte Gainsbourg and William Hurt. A split vote, a wildly split vote, on Kids in the Hall, Brain Candy. I thought it was an outrageous comedy. Roger was outraged by it. And two thumbs up for Ghost in the Shell, the Japanese animation film that may introduce a whole new audience to Japanimation. Brain Candy, Roger. Brain Candy. I wish that Check for it you, out. Gene. Check I it out. I think no, no, you've been no. taking too much of it. No, I'll tell you what. I'm going to see this picture again. I'm going to laugh just as hard. Okay, well, maybe I will, too. That's it for this week. Next week, we'll be back with reviews of more new movies, including Celtic Pride, starring Dan Aykroyd and Daniel Stern, as two diehard basketball fans who kidnap opposing player Damon Wayans. Don't make me hurt you now! And Mrs. Winterborn, a comedy about mistaken identity, starring Ricky Lake and Shirley MacLaine. That's next week, and until then, the balcony is closed. <laughs> Extra Strength Gas X Soft Gels. Powerful, fast acting gas pain relief in an easy to swallow pill. You can refinance your mortgage or get a home equity loan at the Money Store 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Call 1 800 Loan Yes. I'm mad at Night Hall. People who worried about sleep aids used to count me. Now they feel safe with Night Hall to help them sleep. Night Hall will help you get those Z's. You have a 30-year mortgage, so shouldn't you have a 30-year faucet? Moen. Buy it for looks. Buy it for life.